uh, around 30 years ago or so, uh, physicists started looking at a very special system. So um, that special system uh, is a very, very thin metal. Uh, it's thin enough that the electrons are really confined to only move in two dimensions, so only move in a plane uh, in, a, in a magnetic field, okay? Um, well, that's what they were looking at. It turns out to be interesting. So what does a magnetic field do? So a magnetic field causes the electrons to bend in their trajectories. So an electron moving along will curve. If we have a really strong magnetic field, what that does is it makes the electrons tend to go around in little loops. So we picture the electrons are sitting in this, this plane of this material and they're making little loops. Um, but again, quantum mechanics tells us that these electrons must be waves. And so this picture of, of little uh, billiard balls going in loops isn't quite right. We need to convert those to waves. And so these waves are kind of curled up on each other uh, and they, they come back around to meet each other head to tail. There are different ways that waves can do that. Um, we can have different number of wavelengths going around that loop, but it should be an integer because they should come back and meet each other. Um, and so physicists thought about this particular system and they said, well, aha, this is going to give us new energy bands. And that's, that's what it does. So there's a new energy band now associated with every integer number of wavelengths around that loop. Um, so in a really high magnetic field, what we expect is that we'll get an insulator, we'll get uh, a material that has these energy bands, it has gaps between them, and well, at least if we get it um, full right up to the next uh, energy gap, it should be an insulator. Um, okay, so far so good, but uh, well, you always have to do the experiment, and it turned out um, when people measured the, when people actually measured the electrical properties of this very thin metal in a magnetic field, they found something rather different. Um, so when you measure the resistance of this very thin metal and you turn up the magnetic field, you get something like this. So the resistance starts out at some finite number and it maybe oscillates around a bit, but then eventually it starts dropping down to zero peri periodically. Um, now, if the material is becoming an insulator, you'd expect the resistance to go up to infinity. It becomes very resistive to electrical current. This is a material that's resistance is going not to infinity, but to zero. That means it's not an insulator, it's a conductor. And not only that, it's a perfect conductor. No resistance at all. So this is very surprising. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a discovery that's now famous. It's called the quantum Hall effect. And so it, this, uh, this effect is now um, well known by physicists. And it was recognized in 1985 with a Nobel Prize for Klaus von Klitzing, who was the experimentalist who discovered uh, this effect. So what's happened recently is that, we've ha is that we've had now a mathematical description of exactly what it is that's going on uh, inside these, uh, these materials. So the thing that we forgot, the thing that we left out that, that, that uh, when we, we conceptualize this material is that we didn't think about what's happening on the edges. The electrons inside this material in a high magnetic field are going in these little loops but there are some extra electrons that live near the edge. And when they try to make a loop, they hit the edge and then they keep bouncing around along the edge and they actually just go one way around the, around the edge of the material. And it's these, ele these electrons on the edge that they have additional energy and momentum states that are inside the gap. And so these lines inside the gap represent the electrons inside the, uh, along the edge. And that means we can never have the system filled up to where it's filled up right to a gap and then there are no states above because there are some extra states always in the gap. And those extra states turn out to be these states that go around the edge and they can conduct perfectly because they just go one way around the edge. They never turn around and go the other direction. So this is what we now know as a topological insulator. And the advance was to understand the structure mathematically of this of the elect what the electrons are doing in this material. And it has to do with topology and it's a bit complicated, but now it's understood. And so understanding that is what, uh, was what led to the Nobel Prize in 2016. And what, what's more is that it's led to the discovery that you don't actually need a magnetic field. In fact, there are lots of materials out there that are topological insulators. We just didn't know it. Um, and so, uh, for instance, bismuth, mercury, telluride, there, there are several materials actually that are not, they don't fall into this category of insulator or metal. They're in fact topological insulators. And if you make them very thin, they can have these 
conducting edges that can conduct perfectly. Um, so that's really amazing. These materials are always out there. We just didn't know it.